Welcome to Myler's Mods, ladies and gentlemen. So this is my top five non-mainstream blaster picks. There's another one in there for honorable mention, ladies and gentlemen. I just couldn't help myself because of what it can be modified to do. So let's begin. And these are really in no particular order. Uh, so number one, we have the Fire Phoenix here. And I tried to keep these blasters to about $50 or less. So keep that in mind as well. We have the Fire Phoenix here. The reason why this is a top pick is one, with just a few dollars, literally a few dollars, you can turn this blaster into a 200 plus FPS monster. I mean, that blaster right there shoots at like 230. People have gotten them up to 240, 260. Seriously. I mean, you really can't count the cosmetic pieces like the sight or the saber tip or anything like that. But for literally the cost of a spring and a talon claw barrel from Frontline Firm, because that's what's in that, you know, you have a 230 FPS monster. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the rest of the parts are free. Like, you know, you, you just need a piece of plastic to take the slop out of mag. Well, bam. It shoots talons. It did take talons in the beginning, too. It's just very loose, you know, and the grip is removable. It just takes time and patience, you know, but the sight from foam blast and the uh, saber tip really kicks it off. But next, we have the K2. The K2 is not really a revolutionary blaster, but it kind of is. It's a straight Pretty much a one-to-one -one copy of a Dart Zone Pro MK2. I'm not gonna lie to you. I sh it's ridiculous to lie to you. There are some differences. One, the blaster is a lot chunkier than the original MK2. The safety's oriented a little differently. Uh, the grip is rubberized instead of metal plating on it. It's just a chunkier blaster. Fun fact, though, that's the speed loaders for the K2. The Dart Zone Pro speed loaders for the MK2 will fit in that blaster and vice versa very easily too. And I've seen this blaster as cheap as $15 on Amazon. You know, I mean, that's really awesome. That blaster there shoots at like 120 in its stock form, which is really no slouch, especially for a pist uh, pistol. So over here... We had the LP-55. This blaster costs anywhere between $30 and $50, depending on where you buy it. This one here came off of Ally Express. I mean, it's basically a Dart Zone Pro MK2, but it's mag-fed. It, and the improvement is, it doesn't take six darts, it takes seven darts per mag. Which is really awesome. You know, this blaster here shoots at 110, uh, 100 FPS. Pretty consistency, which is great. I, I absolutely dig this blaster. You know, I mean, it, it comes with two mags, you know, some accessories, some darts. It's, it's really nice, you know, especially for like 30 bucks if you find it on Ally Express, which I did. You know, it's, it's a pretty decent pistol. And again, these are in no particular order. It just is what it is. Now we have an honorable mention down here. This is the M79 grenade launcher that I found on Ally Express. The reason why it's an honorable mention, granted in its stock form, it's got really piddly performance. But if you notice, that's a 40 millimeter gas grenade cartridge attached to a Mega XL uh, shell that was printed at front, Frontline Foam. That's part of the Pico blooper from Old Fusion Designs. Well, that fun fact is that shell will fit in that blaster and with very little modifications, it will fire that shell. So in theory, you have a 200 FPS Mega XL blaster. Pretty awesome, isn't it? And I found that one for 50 bucks. Yeah, 50 bucks. Now down here, we have the SP-50. The SP-50 is a really nice blaster. This blaster here pops at 110 FPS. 
And keep in mind, all these blasters here, you can buy extra mags for extra speed loaders for you just have to look around. You know, but the SP-50, it's a really nice blaster. It shoots at 110 FPS. It's mag and grip. It pretty much looks like a Desert Eagle. You know, it's a really nice pistol. It's well constructed, well built. It's got a metal barrel in it. Heck, all of these blasters here, with the exception of the grenade launcher, just because of the size of it, have metal barrels in them. All of them. You know, that just goes to show that even China gets the message, you know, that metal barrels are superior to plastic. Just saying. And down here, we have, last but not least, the T21. This is a great little pistol for two reasons. One, it's designed to be taken apart, okay, and played with. It's got an easy breakdown feature. You just pull a pin, you eject the mag, within three steps that you have that blaster open and you're at the internals. It's designed to teach people how to work on blasters. It's a really great little pistol. It's very easily moddable, very easily upgradable. Like I said, it teaches you how to work on mag and grip blasters. Or at least the over or, or excuse me, the under uh barrel plunger tube uh models. The direct plunger tube, you would have to get something like an LP fifty five, which is this guy up here. But both of those blasters will teach you how to work on, like the MK2s, the Fire Rats, the Vipers. You know, it's it's a really great teaching tool, but you guys just have to look around for stuff like that. When this blaster comes, it comes in its stock form, which shoots about 80 FPS, which is kind of slow. But I put a rival spring in, in and out of a Kronos, and it pops with about 100 FPS average right now, which is not bad. Prime is very manageable. It's a very nice pistol. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the top five non-mainstream blasters. Until next time, this is Milo's Mods signing off.